all right thanks for staying with us um i think we have a video so let's play that first then we'll come back to this, the conversation guys we are facing a lot here in germany as a lady we are facing a lot here in germany in fact europe generally we are facing a lot like we have to pay for everything because we don't know what they're called we don't have love here there's no love if you like a guy and you talk to the guy you have to pay for everything like you just say okay guys can you come to my house today yeah sure i will but you have to pay for the transportation going to come you have to pay for this guy and after he came to your house you have to cook for him you keep you cook for him and we don't even know where they're living. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. I didn't even know what that's all. But according to this German-based Nigerian lady, right, she, it seems like the roles have changed and Nigerian women are the ones um, seeking the attention of men in the diaspora. Gender role is a social role encompassing a range of behaviors and attitudes that are generally considered acceptable, appropriate, or <laughs> desirable for a person for a person based on that uh, person's sex. Now, gender roles are usually centered on conception of masculinity and femininity, although um, there are exceptions and variations. Now, the specifics regarding this gendered expectation may vary from culture while other characteristics may be common throughout a range of cultures. Now, so tonight, we are asking, what does relationship scene and gender role, what does it look like, the relationship scene and gender role, what does it look like in Nigeria versus the diaspora? <laughs> I think this is why Uti came back to Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 a 3 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. You know, I mean, she raised very salient points about um, lack of love. You know, you know, we always say that one thing that we have going for us as a people is our communal nature. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> But there's a video that I found very interesting. That video has been going viral on TikTok. In, in fact, the man has uh, 1.8 million views. And he has so many sounds. Like, people have used his sound. I don't know mm -hmm. if they can find that video. I mean, if you find that video, just let me know. I'll cue it in. You know, it's a video on TikTok where the man was talking about women. That women actually are supposed to be taken care of. Right? So, I think it's a cultural thing in Nigeria. I don't know about other African countries because I've not experienced what relationships are like in other African countries, but Nigeria, right? A lot of men pride in themselves to say that, you know what, I'm, that is my woman, I'm taking care of her. Now you can't open your eyes and say you want to jackpot. So this is something to consider <laughs> when you're jackpotting that yeah, you are going to be alone. You are going to be paid. You know, it's so interesting. She said she pays the men to come to her house she will feed them, do all sorts of things and all of that, and pay back their transport fee to return. That she doesn't even, even know where these men live. Ah, oh, what a life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it seems, I mean, I feel so bad laughing in the face of the pain of another woman. But really and truly, my first question is, who sent you? <laughs> <laughs> you can't go by yourself. But, I mean... <laughs> I'm so sorry. It just sounds so funny. Um, the pickings are slim. You know, even here in Nigeria, a lot of women will tell you they are struggling to find good men. Responsible. Where yeah. we are plenty, like this is this is this here, Terra Farmer, this is our own. We are all, all over the place. There's two hundred million of us. Inside two hundred million, you are still struggling to find the one. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna go. <laughs> Abroad, <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you people that this is the Mary Z Uchi relocated. She has not told you. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Let me tell you something. My own was very simple. I always knew I was going to come back to Nigeria, so I didn't want to date anybody in the abroad. So that you know, love is a funny thing. It will catch you now. The next day you'll be like, I'm just gonna stay here and get married. No, no, no. So I was always looking for them yeah. back here, but. Uh, 
But the problems that she's facing, um, on a serious note, I don't think that it's unique to the Nigerian diaspora. Mm. Um, I think that most minorities, because we, I mean, my ad advice to her would be, I'm sure there's lots of German men, hey ho, but um, every minority faces the same challenges. Once you are outside of your home environment, right, um, you find that there is that, um, what's the word now, there is that, a smaller pool to choose from. I mean, if you watch on, on the uh, popular streaming platforms today, there's so many different programs showing those experiences. I particularly like the Indian ones. Now, maybe it's time for Nigerians to start reconsidering her into marriages. Maybe they can help her find a man here and perhaps, you know. Perhaps. Perhaps. You know, <laughs> solutions. I, I'm, I'm all about solutions. Mm. So maybe that is what we need to start doing. But what I mean is that when you watch those kind of shows, you see that the challenges are the same. Young Indians are looking for people. They, most of them, or a lot of them go too. home, mm -hmm. go back to India to find, to find yeah. matchmakers and all of that. There's, so on, on, on the platform, there is an Indian one. There is an Israeli um, Jewish one. I mean, there's all sorts. So the fact is, once you're picking from a smaller pool, your options are limited. Quite so, slim. Maybe this is, for the tech founders out there, maybe this is now this the time to start now. an app specifically for connect. certain minorities in the diaspora. It's possible. I want tech status. Where are they? But let me come to you, EC, right? I mean, when you saw the video, what came to your mind, right? Did you find it funny or, you know, do you... Honestly, I cannot be sorry for her. I'm so sorry. Today, I, I, I... We are on the same school of thought, to be candid. I am. Um, it was quite hilarious first. I, it was hilarious to me because I, I couldn't understand why she would pay someone to come to her house and she would cook for him and have some, you know, hanky-panky with yeah. him. And at the end of the day, this guy would zoom out of the house and she wouldn't even know where he is. It also shows two things, okay? I'm not an old-fashioned person. I, through and through, I believe in the gender roles. Men are supposed to do what they are supposed to do and the women are supposed to do what they're supposed to do. But in this case, she is taking out, assuming all the roles, basically. And it shows that, you know, to a large extent, she doesn't understand her feminism or her femininity, pardon me, her femininity. So what she did is she actually must have portrayed herself in the light of being desperate, mm -hmm. okay, for attention or for the fact that she needs a man. And she was able to go all out to do everything for him. Now, with that thought in mind, I have the idea that you have the, he's a man. Men are the same all over the world. There is no difference, basically. Character-wise, basically. If a woman throws themselves, uh, throws herself at, at him or a, a particular type of man, the man will absorb it in every way he can actually think about it. In this perspective, I'm looking at the man being a nam, a, nam, a, 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 a sissy, to be candid. I don't want to say a namby-bamby kind of person. Now, he's a sissy. When I say he's a sissy, because he's a weakling, he is comfortable with the woman doing everything for him. And that is that seems to be the kind of people she is um, attracted to or she finds herself around that vicinity. Because again, we have individuals who are also in Germany and are also seeing, or should I say seeing, they are also finding their spouse. Really? Because when I looked at that post, I actually looked at the commentaries on the post and what she said was, oh, there are some people still here. Some of the uh, commentators said, uh, we are also in Germany. Speak for yourself, young lady. We are also in Germany and we have, I found my husband three months after I got to Germany. So there is something she isn't doing right. And that cuts across ladies all over the world. If you throw yourself at a man, man will do what he has to do and he'll walk away. Hmm. That's hmm. my type. Hey, Jennifer, <laughs> over to D. <laughs> hey, easy does scatter the table. <laughs> 
Yeah. Where do I want to start from? So I, I, to an extent, I don't agree with some of the things um, EC has said, right? Um, but there's one thing I believe, right? If you're going to leave Nigeria and you're relocating abroad, you should be okay with being single for a period of time because the kind of men that we have out there, they, they don't have the same cultural upbringing or traditional upbringing as the Nigerian man. That's aside. Now, when you go abroad, the thing is, a lot of Nigerian women are looking for their fellow Nigerian man. Right? Like Uti said, the pool is very small. And guess what? Maybe 20 women are chasing one man. Do you understand? Nigerian men go abroad and then they spread their tentacles. They are able to date white women. They are able to date Asian women, Indian women, or women from other, um, other continents, right? But when Nigerian women travel abroad, you're still looking for the same Nigerian men. It's not that like you will not find. The truth is, when you go out there, you might find men that are unavailable. Now, if they are unavailable to you, it just means that you're going to remain single for a period of time, pending when you finally find that somebody. And sometimes, when you find that somebody, you realize that there are other women that are chasing him. So you end up jumping from one relationship to another. Now, um, saying, oh, you have men that are, that are CCs or men that are weaklings, again, it comes down to cultural upbringing, right? How they were brought up. That's how it is out there. You go out there and then you go on a date. A man is asking you to pay. In Nigeria, when you go on a date with a Nigerian man, I don't think you hardly find a Nigerian man that would actually ask you to pay or to split the bill on a date, right? If you go to, if you go to Kenya, when I traveled to Kenya last year and I was talking to some of the women, they were so excited because we went for a wedding, right? Nigerian and Kenyan wedding. And they saw the way the Nigerian men were spraying money. That's why they chased all that. We they were looking, you know, you know, that? We they were looking at us like this. So I had to ask someone, like, what's going on? They don't Nigerian oh, men. That their men don't spend money, their men don't do this, they don't do all of that. I'm like, interesting. So they held on to the Nigerian men that we traveled with. I said, eh, sure. This is how they should rush. Our then men, they rush us. Our <laughs> right? So I, I, I mean, I, I feel the pain of, of, of this young lady because I've actually heard about it. I, I mean, I have friends in Canada where the women are actually saying, oh, we, it, it is very difficult to get into relationships because when you meet these men, some of them are not ready, right? Either because they just came into the country or they have... Some of they, them are just there to Yeah, explore. some of them are just... They want to meet other women from other cultural backgrounds mm -hmm. from other continents that they, they would tell they you they would tell you so you see the truth is the truth is right if you if you let something happen it's going to happen right if you give if if i tell a man oh you can come meet me and we can do he will do it He's, he's only looking out for his selfish interest, right? The fact that you cooked for me and you did it does not mean I must be in a relationship with you or I have to pay for something, right? If you give it to me for free, I will collect it for free. And it's as simple as that. You cannot blame the young men, right? If she had said no from the beginning, oh, I don't want to pay for this, they will not force her to bring out her money. So she's the one who wants to do it. And if the man sees that, oh, you're allowing this happen, he's going to take advantage of it. I don't think you can blame anyone, except if, he intentionally lied to her, right, about his financial status or something like that. That's an entirely different um, different situation, right? Even mm -hmm. young men in Canada, I've had Canada friends, men who, Nigerian men who have said, ah, Jennifer, if you decide to jackpa and relocate to Canada, come with your man. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, because the men are scarce for the women, right? And then he says, he himself, he wants um, a Nigerian woman. But he's like, oh, I think I want to explore. So my question to him, if you keep exploring, what's going to happen to our... I say, everybody, you came on your own. Every man Answer your for himself. <laughs> right? I mean, I mean, these things, these things happen. Understand. Even, even Chinese, understand Chinese understand. people, I've worked with the Chinese, right? When they come to Nigeria, it's not very easy for them to find their fellow Chinese um, 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 women. women or even men to date. Right? Some of them had to, had to wait till when they brought a new Chinese person to the office. They would grab... Grab the person like this. And most of the Chinese men that I worked with already have wives back in, in China. China. 
So oh. the, the Chinese women who come to the office, they don't look at them two times. It's like, oh, you're my friend. And then that's it. So the Chinese women are struggling. Before you know, somebody will say, I'm going on vacation. They'll go to China. And they'll come back and married. Because there is nothing here for them. Even the Indians, when you meet the Indians, you realize that a lot of them are coupled up already. Because somebody, like she said, arranged marriage. The man is here. He's already working. Before you know what's happening, his wife has shipped his family has shipped the woman down to him. Oh, marry because they themselves they, they are not ready. How many how many um, Indians do you see marrying Nigerians? Yeah, marrying Nigerians. Mm. How many Chinese have you seen marrying Nigerians? Even the Europeans that actually come here, some of them come with their women. Mm. Except maybe they mm. go to the UK and then they find um, black women. Those are the the men that are interested in black women. We are the minority. And the truth is, when you go to a white man's land, you go to America and you go to UK, even the white men still, in a way, don't want to date black women. And that's, that's the world we find ourselves in. It sucks. It, it, it's not a sweet thing to be in, but not nice, that's, not nice. that's a reality. Why are people not open to, what's it called, intercontinental marriage? Interracial yeah. marriage. We're not even, we're not even doing intertribal, right? <laughs> we're still having issues with intertribal. Not we want to, to talk, talk of... Uh, hi, this way. Let's go on a break. I want to open our phone lines. I want to hear... Your thoughts. But I, I, I want to touch on, when we come back from that break, what EC said about weaklings. Because I think, again, these are like stereotypes that has affected how men behave. Yeah. When we come back from that break, uh, we'll, we'll discuss that and we'll open our phone line. Stay with us. Stop cursing them. Let the women breathe. <laughs> Don't suffocate them. <laughs> Let me. <laughs> Do you know women? It's our responsibility. <laughs> Let me complete it. <laughs> Now, if you just tuned in, <laughs> let the women breathe. Mm. If you just tuned in, right, we're discussing relationship and gender roles, ni uh, especially Nigerian versus the diaspora. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to the right one, 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow, Africa 1, with hashtag Wayshow. Now, our phone line is now open, right? And the number to call is 70 250 I wish today is the day that SA will call from the U.S. Let me see whether what they Because I, I think the U.S. don't have those challenges. There's, a, there's quite um, diversity there compared to Europe. Because, you know, they're a bit... Uh, again, it depends you, on where you are in the, in the US, U.S., right? The population... Yeah, like, especially in like in, at, in Atlanta, Houston, Texas, Maryland, true. If you go and put yourself in some... Some very... Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, Washington State or something like... I mean, it's not, it's not, again, true, it's the very same true. thing, simple statistics, right? There's less people to choose from. It's not impossible to find. Um, and I think from what Issy was saying, the same thing that applies to that lady in Germany is the same thing that applies to women, even here in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. If you believe you're not going to find, then you, you sure won't find. you're not going to find. So um, there is that perspective as well, that mindset, because you do hear a lot of women say that. And sometimes for me, um, I come down to what value do you place on yourself? And I think that's what Isi was trying to say. What value do you place on yourself? And are you, do you see yourself as being worth it? Do you see yourself as being, um, you can't expect somebody to value you and love you if you don't place that kind of worth on yourself. So I, I, are you essentially, I mean, I don't, know that, I don't even know that <laughs> I would judge her from the perspective of maybe paying for transportation or whatever, because that starts to break the conversation down too far away from me. But, the fact is, once you have a mindset about something, it's going to manifest in the way mm. that your mindset yeah. goes. So, you know, that's speaking me. about mindset, I know that this happens a lot in the Igbo culture. Correct me if I'm wrong. I know that a lot of time, that's why December is a big deal for the Igbos, mm. right? You see them go back home. Even the ones living in Lagos here, the, the, the young ladies, they tell you, ah, that's home that I'm going. Because a lot of guys from diaspora, a lot of women from diaspora. So it's almost like a convergence, right? So everybody then sees, okay, who, who, who. 
But you see, when we talk about gender roles, which is what where Isi was touching on and talking about weaklings and all of that, we still need to correct the notion that a man must be the provider. Do you understand? Really, if I have the money, I will... I will send my I will send a private jet to go and pick up my guy. Guy, meet me up in the what's it called? Where where be that fancy place where private jet they land? Just meet me up there, send the jet to you. I mean it doesn't make any sense for you to stereotype the rules and believe that it is a man that must do certain things. That's what I'm trying to say. But I think we have our first caller for the evening. Austin from Benin, you are live. Good evening. Austin, are you there? Good evening to you all. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, good evening. You're live. Hello. You are live. We can hear you, Austin. Hello. Oh, sugar. I think you have to call back because are you it... me? Good yes, evening. we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Um. Okay. A lady came from and uh, from here back. And she wanted to get married to somebody here. And uh, I asked her a question. I said, what is it like in, uh, in London? Do you, when, when the, the guy is there to take you out, do they also pay your bills? Like we do here in Nigeria. Because we are very proud to do that here, here in Nigeria. And what she told me was that these ladies from this other world, this uh, West Africa country, so that's Africa country, that they don't, they will not allow you to pick their bills. In fact, they frowned at it. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, in your own case now, what do you say? He said, well, I, I, I'm a Nigerian woman. If you take me out, you should, you should pay my bills. So the question now is, what is it about Nigeria that is the way in Nigeria that only the men keep picking the bills? Austin. Is it cultural or what? Austin. Now, we have a problem. We have a problem now. A lot of the young men don't have jobs. Hello? Go ahead. A lot, of, a lot of the young men don't have jobs. And now you have uh, a lot of ladies who want to get married and, uh, and all that. And now they don't have money to get married. So we're actually really in a very big problem right now. Thank you. A serious problem. And uh, maybe we should keep, uh, we have to find a way to, we have to find a way around it. Mm. I mean, we have to do things differently now. Mm. Good evening. Thank you, Austin. Let's. The man breathe. No <laughs> okay. If you don't have a job, please don't look for a relationship. Stay <laughs> single. You know, it was, Stay single. It was so funny when Austin was speaking, right? Um, one of the first experiences, a close friend of mine, so she relocated back to Nigeria from the US. Um, and it was, we went for a, a burial of another friend's father. And there were all these sort of her colleagues, work colleagues and friends, people that had, we'd all come from Lagos together to Benin for the burial. We're in the hotel. So, you know, the party was over, but we were all sat outside and then we ordered some food. So, you know, we were hungry. We ordered food and then the guys too ordered food. So, you know, respectable people, I just met you today. I don't know you, you know. So when we finished eating, we asked for the bill. Never in my life have I had such vehement anger they don't know also the anger was how dare you so you are trying to say that between the three of us we, we can't cannot pay for this food <laughs> my friend and i were like what's going on here <laughs> and it was such a big deal so i think there is a cultural context here because they they were obviously extremely upset, upset by the fact that us trying to pay the bill in their presence was, was like an insult to say <laughs> yes and we were i mean we're very spoilers confused. please so it's a thing. It's normal. <laughs> it's a big thing. Is it? So I was going to say, you know, help me clarify this thing because again, when you put the word "weakling" to a man, right, it doesn't sit well in my system. Maybe you should help me probably throw more light on what you meant by that. Then, um, what? How do we define a man? Defining a man is based on principles. Was the man's principle just like a woman should have a principle? A man should have his principles, he should have certain things that guides him to make certain decisions. Okay, now where we have individuals or a man who is comfortable, okay, quite comfortable with um, a woman coming to a woman's house, 
eating her food, having hanky panky with her, and walking away. It's hanky panky. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a cold, it's like a cold man. You know, like we have a cold girl. We have a cold man here playing. So where this individual has played out in the lady's life, he has made a situation. Uh, he has made the situation seem like. He is just here for the for the game. He has come, he has played, he has walked away. That's not somebody you're supposed to take seriously, which brings me back to the fact that if he was not serious about this lady, he shouldn't have eaten her. Uh -uh. Wait, so who's here? Is he? Yes. Now, you only Is he wait now? Let me land. Let me land. He shouldn't have eaten her food based on the fact that he has some. She's taking this thing too deep. <laughs> A man with principles will not be would not put himself in that position where he would do everything with the lady, even if the lady is willing, at least he would lay the cards on the table for the woman, uh -huh. for the woman to say, okay, yes, I'm willing to play the game based on this. But from everything that was exhibited by this lady, she wasn't sure of what this man's standing was. It was just like, hey, okay. it was um, something that he just had to do. Or he was lying to her in a particular way. Or something. You see, wait. Now, let me use your mouth to say the man that you go know. You, do you not think that that is actually his career? If he has chosen <laughs> that, that is his career path to be, to be happy, to be lashing on, on what is it called? He was principled, alright? It might be his principle to just be eating women's money now. Principle doesn't have what to be. What is the definition of princi pr being principled? Principle is what you believe in, right? Your, what you, you stand for, right? Maybe what he, right? believes, Maybe what he believes in and what he stands for is eating women's money and, <laughs> and doing the hanky panky. I think you're unfairly judging this person. I don't think yeah. that's yeah. Yeah. information. Yeah. He might I totally be... get where you're coming from. <laughs> I totally understand what you're saying. But again, a man who knows himself will not put himself in that position. If that is what he wants to do, it's fine, it's okay. But a situation where the lady is not aware of that is what he wants from her, that is a No, no. But we don't know that. But we don't know that. Don't know that. I think that you're overthinking it. Yeah. So my perspective here is this. We don't know enough about the guy or the situation to say here is what it exactly. is. Exactly. Right? But the fact is, Let's not forget that this person has gone into the diaspora. She doesn't tell us how long he's been there. He might still be in the hungry phase where I just got here, I haven't settled in. I mean, there are just so many elements to it that we don't have context. But she was taking it seriously. Sorry? She was taking it quite seriously. She was taking it quite seriously. Yes, now yes. I need it serious. Uh, for you to, to, to pay for a man to come over to your house, for you, I need it was serious. So yes. she is sorting herself out in the best way that she can. I'm just saying that I don't know that we know enough about the guy to make exactly. that call to say principled and weakling. Some people just need to eat. And let me tell you something. This particular arrangement, the way she, she, she used her mouth to explain it, it was mutually beneficial. The what did they call the hanky panky was a, was a beneficial hanky panky. Also, like literally, right? <coughs> before, when I when someone says it's just like how girls, you understand? You a guy would invite you. I mean, you've seen several videos on Instagram. A guy would invite you yes. over, and the girl says send transport money. He puts the guy off, right? It's the same mm -hmm. thing, right? Some guys go ahead to give the girl transport money. Some guys say no. Why would I send you transport money? If you want to come, come. If you're not coming, stay. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing the lady should have done. I mean, I say, let's meet. And you now say, send transport. Doesn't that already give you an idea that this is a, a no-go area? Yeah. You now come back and, and then cry. The girl is desperate. But, but she's, she's just desperate. crying about the transport money. She's crying about this is what I have to do to get my hands on a man. Hey, that's, true, that's true, that's true, that's, that's true. She knew what she was getting said, herself into. She had a need and she found a solution. You may not like the solution, that is fine. But let's not detra de detract from the main point. <laughs> <But> I also <laughs> find it very weird. I find it very weird that you're inviting somebody to your house and you don't know where they live. Hmm. Right? To me, it is, to, me, to me, it is very irresponsible. Even for a man and for a woman, right? If you're inviting someone to your house, you don't know where they live, you probably don't even have like full information on this person. And then they come to your house. What if they kill you? 
right? I understand, I understand that um, people get desperate, which is normal. Men get desperate. See, it's desperation that makes men leave America and come down to their village and marry a woman that they don't even know from Adam. Right? You just pick a woman and then you go abroad with her because you want to get married. Because you want to you you want to marry, you want to what subdue her when you finally get there, or something like that, right? People get desperate. In as much as I get that, but don't put yourself at risk just because you're looking for husband. Please let's do this thing with with caution. As you said. You want to do hanky panky, that's that's your business. I'm not even going to judge you. Oh, for that. Yeah, that's that's, that, that's but, your choice. But, but let's let's uh, in trying to bring down, bring uh, wind down this conversation, right? Um, how do we begin to help people living in the diaspora, right? To begin to shape, I mean, shift their 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 beliefs because I believe strongly that it's because. So I had a conversation with someone, and the person said that. If you notice, a lot of Nigerians, when they leave, they're looking for Nigerian communities, Nigerian this, Nigerian that, you know. Somehow, right, it limits the, the opportunities that you would create for yourself eventually. Mm. You know, so, I mean, she was just, like, counseling that if we have people that are going abroad, you know, try as much as possible to look beyond your immediate community or what you are used to, what you're familiar with. A lot of people make that same mistake, right? They want to just go within that community, you know, because again, um, if you truly want to, um, what's it called, get used to a, a place, you must also explore. Some people are not comfortable exploring. They just want to be, be in that dear cocoon. So you see them eating Nigerian food. You see them eating, you know, going to Nigerian restaurants. You see them only patronize. So... They don't even explore other the the probably the owners of the land, their culture and all of that. So how would you, you know, become a lot more um, well accepting or welcoming of those kind of people? So I mean, there are certain p things that I feel like if we begin to shift how we think, right? Perhaps, right? We begin to also look appealing to those people. I mean, I've seen so many people marry blacks. I've seen um, different cultures marry different people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Except you are the ones that say, no, 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 I must marry from my village, from my... Because this even happens here. You want to marry a Yoruba man, they say, no, 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 you must go back to Edo State. You understand? The diaspora conversation... For sorry, me. let me take Philip from Ojo. I think he's been holding, sorry. Then you, I'll come back to you. Philip, you're live. Hello? Did we lose him? Go ahead. The diaspora conversation for me, first and foremost, is we gravitate to the known. The concept or the, the idea of moving to a completely new space is already quite unsettling. Yeah. It is natural to want to gravitate to what you know. The challenge there is when you do not broaden your horizons besides, beyond, you know, beyond that. So, yes, a lot of people today, I can say that, live in the UK... In fact, we used to make this joke when a, a, a Nigerian, fully Nigerian um, TV station opened because people now had no reason to watch BBC or whatever the hell, you know. You could just turn this, this station on and it was Nigerian movies all the time. So the fact is, the world has become more multicultural. Depending on where you live, you have access to these things and it doesn't allow you to broaden your horizon mm. unless you deliberately do so. And a lot of Nigerians do. And the, it's not just Nigerians. We are all locked. It's all cultures. Minorities are yeah. cultures. Because you, you stick to the norm. Yeah. You stick to people that share your values, that share your, you know, your thought process and all of that. The fact is when you do go abroad, you do need to interact with other people. And integrate. You need to eat other foods. Mm -hmm. The one that's funny for Let me, me is the Philip. people that go on holiday mm. and then go and look for Nigerian mm. food in Dubai. <laughs> is Philip still there? Or do we lose? Hello? Hi, you're live. Hello. Good evening. Yeah, hello, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Go ahead. Yeah. I've been listening to you ladies. Uh, honestly, there's no, nothing like the expression in what you are saying. One man's meat is another man's poison. What that lady wants may not be what you wanted. What you wanted may not be what another lady wanted. So a lady can actually do anything he can do to win a man to accept. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. <laughs> it's just that this this move failed because now she don't know where the man they maybe don't switch your phone. And make her begin the cry say, ah this was wasted investment. But I mean you try your luck, you invest, you try, you invest. But easy, let me come back to you. Final thoughts, then I'll come back <laughs> to the studio. My final thoughts on this. Yeah. Um, hope. <laughs> I hope that she's um, we ladies are able to understand what we want from a man, and we should be able to put our cash straight on the table with anybody who we think we are we are likely to be serious with. Okay, so that you are not assuming that the person is interested in you in a particular way when he is not. So for me, I would always say, put your cards on the table and let him know what it is you want from him. It's as simple as ABC. Okay. And if it's what he wants, he rolls with you. If it's not what he wants, he walks away. Okay. Jennifer, how about you? Yeah, so for me, um, I think it is okay. People need to start um, prepping themselves up. It is okay for you to go out there and meet people or date people that are outside of your race, right? The most important thing is your values align. So I feel if your, if, your, if your values align, why not? Go ahead, get married, depending on what your goal is. But if you feel like that's not what you want, and you still want your Nigerian man, then go get it, sis. How about you? Good luck. <laughs> no, it's not good luck me, I want to say. To all my Nigerian men taking care of us, please don't stop. <laughs> We love it <laughs> for you to take care of thank us. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you in God's name. Don't stop. Please when I make it in life, I will also take care of you. <laughs> this one was investment gone wrong. <laughs> so when you want to invest, please know the, know the soil you are planting that seed, whether it's going to germinate. Well, I think we have one comment. Uh, you want to take we, that? Is we, that we you? appreciate So Nigerian men, I appreciate you. We appreciate you. I appreciate you. I say thank you. I say may the Lord bless you. Please, <laughs> women, continue to take care of us. Eh? Our men, take care of us. <laughs> and let us breathe. Let us breathe. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a comment here. It says, good evening, my dear beautiful sisters. Of what are you saying? Hashtag ways. Relationship and gender roles, Nigeria versus the diaspora. My dear beautiful sister, Issy said something about a woman paying a man to come and pay her to visit. To pay her a visit, to me that is not too bad, but the man should not see it as a habit and be used to it. When a man is used to such principle of feeding fats from a woman's money, then he is not a responsible man and he becomes a liability. To my own understanding, I'm entitled to my own opinion, the man should be the one to take care of the bills. My dear beautiful sister Jennifer said one important thing. You're inviting someone to your house and you do not know where the person comes from. Supposing the person comes to kill you, this is very important and should not be ignored. Of course, that's from Daniel Illo, our regular fan. Thank you, Daniel. Um, Ade also sent in one very quick. He says, good evening, ladies. The lady in the video has lost confidence in herself. She switched on the panic button on herself and allowed men to take advantage. It's stupid inviting a man, a male gender, you don't know his address into her apartment, is an internal jackpot. You don't go, Otilo. Otilo! <laughs> Daniel, Ilo, and Nadi, thank you for taking care of us. Say, please, <laughs> Nigerian men, I just want to tell you people thank you. Nothing. We appreciate you. Please, please. I'm not, I'm not proud. We need, we need to be taken care of. I beg, because the, the, the paper that they are showing people in the diaspora, we don't, please don't change. Just stay the way you are. <laughs> do more. Do more, do more. <laughs> and the Lord will bless you. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Isi. Thank you, Jennifer. And thank you, Uti. Before we go, ensure sure you follow us across all our social media handles at Waysh Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Do you have another comment? If you missed this quote, here it is again. Men had suddenly become a scarce commodity, if not quite as sought after as rice. Kai, it's a serious matter. We'll see you guys live at 8 p.m. tomorrow as we bring another great conversation to your screen, child. <laughs>